Welcome to this video. Today we will learn about what it means by relative atomic mass and why certain relative atomic masses are not whole numbers. Let's get started. The first thing we want to ask ourselves is, what does the mass of an atom depend on? Recall, in atomic structure, we look at the structure of an atom and we learned that you know in the nucleus, we have the protons and neutrons, which made up most of the mass of an atom. And in the electron shells, that's where we find the electrons, which are very, very light and small. So when we count the mass of an atom or molecule, we typically disregard the mass contributed by that of the electrons, and we just focus on the protons and neutrons. So how heavy is an atom? An atom is very, very tiny and it weighs so tiny that it has the mass of 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Very, very small mass. So it will be very difficult if we want to count them with and work with this kind of small numbers. And it will be very difficult to weigh uh, an atom by itself as well. So we, it is very impractical to use the actual mass to, to actually count atoms. Instead, what we do is to use a relative mass rather than measuring the actual mass. So what does it mean by a relative mass? Let's look at this example. These are all the Singapore coins. We have the five cents, the one dollar coin. So like atoms, they have different sizes and different masses. All right. So if we were to weigh all the coins, this would be the mass of each coin. So what you see here, the values, these are the actual mass. Okay. If we are talking about a relative mass, relative means we want to compare it with something else. So in this case, we can compare the mass of all these coins to the mass of the 5 cent coin. In other words, we give this one unit. So since the 10 cent coin would weigh 2.36, we say that it is 1.39 times heavier than the 5 cent coin. Likewise, we can say that the $1 coin is 4.48 times heavier than the 5 cent coin. So this is what it means by a relative mass. We are comparing all the masses to the same thing, which is the 5 cent coin. That brings us to the point on the relative atomic mass. Since atoms are so small, we compare the mass of each atom to 1 12th of a carbon-12 atom. So this is the carbon-12 atom. In the nucleus, we have 6 protons, we have 6 neutrons. So this is 1 12th of it, and it is also known as 1 atomic mass unit. Okay, so this is something like our mass of a 5 cent coin. So everything will be compared to 1 12th of a carbon-12 atom. You might wonder why we choose you know, carbon-12 atom and 1 12 of it as a unit. You can go online and read more about this, so it has a very interesting history. In the past, scientists um, thought about using hydrogen instead, you know, since it only has a, a mass number of 1. Okay, then they decided to use oxygen. And finally, now we decide to use carbon-12 as a standard, and 1 12 of carbon-12 atom would be 1 unit. So every mass number you see uh, inside the periodic table will be compared to 1 12 of a carbon-12 atom. Above here, you see the definition. So this is important. You need to remember this. The average mass of one atom compared to the mass of 1 12 of a carbon-12 atom. Okay, the word average here is important. And uh, 1 12 of a carbon-12 atom is also a keyword. If you look at the periodic table, um, taking magnesium for example, okay, we see that the relative atomic mass, 24, this means that it is 24 times heavier than 1 12 of a carbon-12 atom. So every element you see in the periodic table would have this number at the bottom, the bigger number that is the relative atomic mass. Okay, and this will tell you how many times heavier this element is compared 
to one twelfth of a carbon twelve atom. Here are more examples. We have carbon, we have magnesium, we have helium. So if you just focus on the bottom row, okay, that is the relative atomic mass, we see that magnesium is 24, carbon is 12. This means that magnesium is twice as heavy as a carbon 12 atom. Okay, so you take two carbon atoms to have the same mass as one magnesium atom. Okay, if we want to compare carbon and helium, each carbon atom weighs three times as heavy as compared to a helium atom. So this is how we look at the different mass numbers because every element is made up of a different number of protons and neutrons. So each of them would have a different relative atomic mass. Take note that the relative atomic mass has no units because this is all relative comparing to uh, something else so there is no units in, in this quantity. Recall that when we learned atomic structure we talked about this term called isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with the same number of protons and electrons but a different number of neutrons. So take for example, chlorine. Okay, we have two different isotopes, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. So they both have the same number of protons, which is 17, but they have different mass numbers because chlorine 37 has two more neutrons than chlorine 35. If you were to observe the periodic table closely, you would notice that certain elements, especially chlorine, would have a relative atomic mass that is not a whole number. So why is that so? It turns out that this number is actually an average value. In this world, there are chlorine-35 and chlorine-37 isotopes. Okay, but it turns out that 75% of the chlorine atoms on our planet is actually chlorine-35 while the remaining 25% is chlorine-37. With all these chlorine atoms, we take the average and we find that the average of a chlorine atom would be 35.5. How we work this out is 75% of them have a mass of 35, 25% of them have a mass of 37 units, Okay, so we take the average, we end up with a value of 35.5. This would explain why certain uh, relative atomic masses are not whole numbers. It turns out that in the O and N level syllabus, okay, chlorine seems to be the only one with a, a mass number that is 35.5. But if you were to go online to search for other versions of the periodic table, you will find that, you know, other elements also have a relative atomic mass that is not a whole number. So all these numbers are because of isotopes and the relative atomic mass takes the average of the masses of each of these isotopes according to how abundant they are. Let me show you another example. So bromine here. For bromine, it has a relative atomic mass of 80. But in this world, Bromine has two different isotopes, bromine-79 and bromine-81. And it turns out that they both exist in a 50% 50% uh, abundance. So if we were to take the average, we end up with a nice whole number here, which is 80. By now, you should be able to define the term relative atomic mass and explain why some of these masses are not whole numbers. That's all we have today. Thanks for watching.